Welcome, today you will learn how to spawn particles from a texture map and how to interact with them with an object. I hope you enjoy this tutorial, now let's get started. Go ahead and open up your content browser and right click to create a new Niagara system. Let's go ahead and type in minimal since we'll be making this effect from scratch. Hit create and let's call this ns underscore textures. Go ahead and double click to open it and drag and drop it to its own browser. Now let's add some particles by going to emitter update and hitting this plus button. Type in spawn and find spawn particles in grid. Go ahead and hit fix issue here. And now we're not seeing the grid and that's because the particles are too big. So if we go to initialize particles, we can change the sprite size mode from unset to uniform. Now we see the grid is there. Now since I'm using an art piece for my texture, I don't want it to give off light. So I'm actually gonna change the renderer here from a sprite renderer and I'm gonna add a mesh renderer. And then I'm gonna use this drop down arrow and I'm gonna change these gizmos. I'm gonna type in sphere. And I'm just gonna find a static mesh sphere. And now that's too big, but before I go ahead and adjust that size, I'm gonna enable material override. Then under override materials, hit this plus button and use the drop down arrows. Now we're gonna create a very simple material. So go ahead and open up your content browser. I'm gonna go to my materials folder, right click, Choose material, let's call it M underscore particle color. Double click to open it. And super simple, just right click, type in particle color. Now find the RGB and link it to base color and you're done. Hit apply and save. Then we can close out of this. Open up the content browser, make sure it's selected and then drop it in there. And now we see it has taken effect. And this will help once we add our sample texture after we shrink the particle size. So under initialize particle, let's find mesh scale mode and go ahead and change that to uniform. I'm gonna make the scale 0.034. And now we can see the particles are smaller. Now it's time to add the sample texture. So under particle spawn here, go ahead and type in texture. And this is where we'll put our texture map, but before we do that, we see it has failed, and that's because we need to go to properties and change the sim target to a GPU sim, and then make the calculate bounds mode fixed. And now we're back to sample texture. Let's go ahead and plop in our texture map. I'll be using the Mona Lisa. She is beautiful. And nice. We see that color is taking place, but it's not working in the right areas. And before I go ahead and change the UV, I'm gonna increase the amount of particles. So I'm gonna to go to the spawn particles in grid. I'm gonna make the X and Y count both to 50. And if I go here and turn off orbit mode, that allows me to control this viewport the same I would a regular level, which I think works a lot easier and I like that. I'm also gonna increase the Z count to 15 just to add a little bit more depth when I go to interact with the particles. So now that that's larger, I'm gonna go back to the sample texture and we're gonna adjust this UV, which will tell the particles which colors to take on from the art piece. So I'm gonna use this drop down arrow. I'm gonna type in make and find make vector 2D. So now we have an X and a Y value and we're gonna use this drop down menu again and type in make and find make float from vector for both the X and the Y. make float from vector. Now with the Y, the channel automatically sets to X and we're gonna change that back to Y. And now we need to do one more step. So under the vectors for both the Y and the X, go ahead and type in grid and find output grid location grid UVW. That, and also do that for the Y. Grid UVW. Nice, and now we see the Mona Lisa has formed. And that's how you spawn particles from a texture map. Now we will move on to part two of this and we will go back to our level here and we'll add the new effect that we just created to the scene. Textures, I'm gonna zero out its location. And now if I were to move the sphere, you would see it's not interacting. So let's go ahead and change that. I'm gonna drag this out so we can see it now. push this over. So under particle update, hit the plus button and type in distance. Find avoid distance field surface GPU. 
we're getting an issue here. So let's push this down and hit fix issue. And that will give us a solve forces and velocity. Go ahead and click that and turn on the speed limit and the acceleration limit. Now, if I were to pull around, we see a little bit of movement is happening, which is already pretty fun. And then if we go back here, these values are really fun to play with. If I were to do the values that I started with, I would give the nearest surface, let me pull this out so we can see the titles, the nearest surface avoidance strength. I made that 50,000, which is very strong. And what that does is it forces particles away with more speed. And I'm gonna add a drag effect, which will add more control. But before I do that, I'll change the fall off distance to 250. Just to show if I make this a thousand, it's gonna affect a lot more particles that are close to it, that are further away from the surface. But I think 250 works well. And then for the avoid distance strength, I'm gonna make this a thousand. This kind of breaks up how the particles move when the, when the ball hits it. Nice. So now I'm going to hit this plus button and type in drag. I'm gonna give the drag a value of five. And then we should be where we started when I made this, when I made the beginning of the tutorial. Nice, now it's resetting pretty fast. And if you want to adjust that, we can go ahead and hit this NS texture here. And let's change the loop duration. Let's go ahead and make this 15. And then if we go back to our main node, let's go to initialize particle and change the lifetime to also 15. Now, if you wanted this to be infinite, you can make this really long for both of them just so it doesn't reset. But now it should just reset every 15 seconds and then we have time to play. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you learned something, please like and subscribe. That would help me out a lot. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Woohoo!